I say all the time that, and I, I, I do this thing with my hands to, to say that this encompasses what I call all of Chicago stepping. This space encompasses all of Chicago stepping. I said, for, but for me, my goal is to always present the dance from a smooth and elegant perspective. And, and that's where I kind of want to, I want to stay there. I want to own that smooth, elegant space. And then I want to invite others into that space to be able to feel how I feel about the dance. And so the point of the major weekend event was to kind of showcase that aspect of it because that's what I saw when I went to Willowbrook. I'd never seen that many people together in one space for one purpose, which was dancing. But I'd never seen us dress up like that either. And so I, was, I said, you gotta see it. Well, first of all, it's ours. It comes straight out of black culture. It's, it, it, it evolved from jitterbug and bop. And so it, it's, it's ours. And what differentiates it is the kind of music that we dance to. just based on the, the music that we hear. And typically, we, we like to dance to classic R&B, smooth jazz. We do some rap, depending on you know the age and the dance, but I had never seen anything like it. I mean, I thought I was doing something when I was a bopper, but when I saw, when I saw Chicago stepping in all of its glory, I was like, nope, I gotta get this one. And when I got it, and it took a minute to get it, but when I got it, I haven't turned back. I started out with a woman by the name of, of uh, Lady Margaret. Um, I think her name was Margaret Fisher. And um, after she had gotten me as far as she felt she could take me, then she referred me to uh, Brian Patterson. But I did everything I needed to do to learn to dance. Every Friday at four o'clock, I left Indianapolis, I drove to Chicago. I would go to the uh, uh, workshop for Brian, two hours, and then I would drive back to Indianapolis. I would practice what I learned Friday night and I would turn around and teach it on Saturday morning. I did that for two years straight. Actually going to different events. And when I would dance with my partner, people would record me dancing. And they'd turn around and put it out on social media. And I just didn't like the quality of the recording. I didn't like the quality of it. I didn't like uh, the audio. And so I just decided I'm gonna record my own stuff. And I just started doing videos. And from there, it just, it just seemed to take off. Uh, and all I was want, all I wanted to do was kind of share. I wanted to share my my perspective on the dance, the way I felt the dance. I wanted to show my style in it, and and to kind of showcase it. And the internet was the best place to do it. So I don't know if it was necessarily me try, making a place in the world of dance. It was me trying to establish my niche so that I could excel in the way that I wanted to express the dance. Let me put it like that. What took it to the next level was when I was asked by uh, the director of film for the Smithsonian to allow a portion of one of my videos to be used in a four minute clip that is now on exhibit at the National Museum for African American History and Culture at the Smithsonian. That's when I knew I was on a different level in terms of my presentation and my 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 space in the dance. California is my spot. California is the spot where I put the ooh in my smooth. <laughs> 
That's the way I like to say it. Um, it wasn't until I came out here that I learned how to do what we call the carousel, which is when you bring the woman to you and you both kind of spin and move at the same time. And it was in California that I perfected my dip. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I did that right here in California. So for me, this, this place, it, you know, it has a special place in my heart uh, because it was the place where with, with, the, with the help of my instructor, and with such beautiful people out here, ladies in particular who helped me to, to allow my dance to grow, I was able to become, I was able to fully establish what I wanted my niche to be. I wanted to be that smooth, romantic guy in the dance. When you dance, the woman is the instrument and the lead's responsibility is to play the instrument. And so uh, my goal was to play the instrument and be as creative as possible in playing the instrument. And and I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to be, I wanted it to look artistic in its flow, right? I wanted our emotion in terms of how we flowed to look artistic. And that's when I came up with the name. You can go to the website artisticmotions.com. We offer free instruction, free, 24-7, 365. All you do is Register and you have access to free content. We have over 3,700 students currently online taking that instruction and it works. Um, I'm just grateful to be here doing what I do. Uh, I'll be 65 in January and I'm still going and I'm still loving it. And I'll be doing this until I'm dead. And when I die, sprinkle me on the wood with some, with some dance wax and go for it. Go for it. And we'll see you on the wood.